Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I just wanted to do a uh, quick sit and talk. Okay, brothers in Christ did a video recently, a live video about internet church versus physical church. And I just wanted to talk about the number one thing, and this is just for me, and it's truth, but the number one thing about the church buildings is they tend to turn people away from the real Jesus Christ. First, they prevent people from finding the real Jesus Christ, the capital L Lord Jesus Christ, and his perfect written word, which is the King James Bible for English-speaking people. Then, if you're truly saved, God saves you and starts leading you to the truth, and you start going to them and saying, hey, um, this King James Bible, I'm being told it's God's perfect written word and the Jesus that's in it. And what do they do? They try to turn you away from it. They try to educate you out of it, you know, convince you that, hey, it's not the best. And that's one of the biggest red flags when it comes to these um, physical churches. Now, can internet churches do the same thing? We have a lot of fake uh, Bible-believing um, people out there trying to do videos and ministries and whatnot. And then there's still a lot of internet videos that um, will attack the King James Bible. But these Bible buildings, that's what they do 100%. On the internet, you still can find a Bible-believing, God-fearing YouTube channel, website, um, audio site, where you can still get taught and pointed to the real Jesus Christ and to his perfect written word that this is the final authority. Okay, Colossians 2.8, okay? what happens in these Bible buildings? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay, remember what I said. The rudiments of the wor world, traditions of men, they tear you away from God's word, and it's not about God's word, it's about man's word. And they don't point you to Jesus Christ. Okay. And then we can talk about the love of money. We've already talked about that before. Okay? The cult of personality where they start elevating the man behind the pulpit. And can the same thing happen on the YouTube channels? Yeah, sometimes I think everybody that I know that's a Bible-believing, God-fearing ministry on YouTube has people that worship them, that hold them above this book. And eventually they're going to get kicked because hopefully we don't get prideful enough that we're okay with you. I'm not okay with you holding me above this book, uh, above Jesus Christ. And because I don't want people holding me above this book, eventually what happens is, is I'll kick something or a brother in Christ will kick something that they don't like. And that person that you realize that they're holding you higher, they turn on you and become your enemy in a heartbeat. Okay. So I just want to throw that out there that my biggest thing about that is that uh, I was going to go into a lot of stuff here, but this is just a sit and talk. The reasons I'm for internet ministry is because right now online you can pause videos and follow you follow along and you can pause it. You can pause it and then, okay, what about this scripture? You can start doing your own Bible study. And when you're at these Babel buildings, they move so fast, you don't get a chance to catch on. You're like, wait a minute, did he just say what I think he saw, said? And the next thing you know, they've moved on to the next point. Okay. Um, true fellowship. Okay, you won't find it in these Babel buildings. Babel buildings. They call them church buildings. You won't find true fellowship in these church buildings. True fellowship is prayer praying for one another, holding each other accountable. What does the Bible say? All scriptures given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? You're supposed to be learning the Word of God and talking about the Word of God. Okay? Um, correction. You're holding each per person accountable to the Word of God and correcting as need be. Okay? Instruction in righteousness. Okay? Encouraging the brothers and sisters in Christ to live a godly life. Okay? Rebuke warning them about false converts and uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Okay? That's what Paul warned us night and day with tears about wolves coming in. After he left, remember, um, Paul said, see if I can find this, 
Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.12, Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, and I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. Okay, He knew that there were people that were elevating him, and he knew that after he left, other people would come in with the same mentality. That wolves would come in and say, hey, you're supposed to listen to me above the Lord, above his word. So, when you get online... I believe that it's better to be on, online ministries are better because like I said, when you're watching my videos, I always encourage you to pause it and turn in the scriptures. Sometimes I just read it off the scriptures because I'm very slow at turning pages. I'm very, very slow. So I'm trying to keep the videos down to under an hour and sometimes to 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, And I'll do multiple parts sometimes. But... I always encourage you to turn to the scriptures. Most of the time in these Babel buildings, they don't encourage you. And the ones that claim to, they say turn here, and they quote part of the verse, and then they go off on a tangent, and go off on a story. Okay, There's nothing wrong with it if it's done a little bit, and the majority of the, the study is based off scripture. Right? Okay, you can speak freely under the videos and straightforward. Um, you don't have the worry like you do in these Babel buildings. If you go to them and say, hey, what about this or what about that? Oftentimes they'll say, well, we'll have to deal with that later. We don't have time for that right now. And when you truly question them and hold them accountable to this book, in other words, you're not going with the flow, you'll be asked to leave. Right? You're not, that's not going to happen on the Internet. You're not going to be asked to leave. Okay? Um, I can block people from making comments on my channel, but I can't block people from watching the video. Okay? And the only reason I block people on my channel is I put on here, you make a comment and let it go. Okay? You make a comment, if you disagree with me on something, you make one comment. I come back with something and say, but the Bible says such and such, after two admonitions, you can reject, I understand what it says, but after the second time saying, well, Come on, you're supposed to believe this. If I'm not going with it, then, okay, you're done. You've said your part. And that's just not me. That's with anybody in my comment section. Brothers and sisters in Christ that are making comments and someone else comes on. Most of the time you have wolves in sheep clothing come on and they're just hammering and hammering and hammering. And you're like, we've already answered that. We've already told you that we believe in this book. And they don't take that for an answer and say, okay, they won't listen. They move on and go somewhere else. No, they keep staying. So yeah, there's times where I will block a comment, but I won't block anybody I, that I know of from the video. I don't know if that's even possible, blocking someone from seeing the video. <clears throat> so that being said, you don't have to worry about pleasing the higher hierarchy, in other words. Okay. You're free to watch the video, to pause. You're free to make comments underneath. And whether people like them or not, doesn't matter to a point. Like I said, I always um, don't like wolves in sheep's clothing come on and um, trying to lead new, uh, newly saved Christians, babes in Christ, astray. But I'm talking about when it comes to fellowship. You come on the comments and say, okay, I want a fellowship. Not that I want to tear people down, but I want a fellowship. You know, you love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You can come on here and fellowship and not worry about the cult of personality at these battle buildings. I have to keep people happy or I've got to please the hierarchy um, like the Nicolaitans. Okay, you don't have to put up with that. Um, donations. You can donate money to help people in ministry not feeling compelled that you have to. Not of necessity. Okay, the Bible says you're not to give of necessity. You don't have to give money. Okay? You don't have to donate to ministries. It's something you have to choose to do and want to do. God's blessed you with more money. It's Babel buildings really push that. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, saying these, it's really good that they're starting to do those. Uh, I think they, I don't know if it's going to be a big thing, but usually, lately it's been a live video that Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries has been doing often. Um, I think that's a good thing for the body of Christ. So our sit and talk lately, I've been very sick. If you notice, the background's different. I had to move the office uh, around so I get better lighting. I'm going to move the uh, marker boards in here. They're in the other room. 
So everything's in one room and the marker boards will be in here. So next time I do a study that requires visual, um, it's got better lighting in here. And I had to move some extra furniture in there. Uh, you can see a dresser in the back over there. Uh, so I had to try to squeeze everything in here. So I know people are probably giving me a hard time about the bookshelves. Uh, I hardly have any books. I mean, honestly, I got a lot of Bible perversions that I found, old Bible versions. I've got secular books. And I think um, this little shelf right here, if I'm, I think, yeah. This little shelf here is all my Christian books. I don't, and then uh, some expository books, the Strong's Concordance. I don't really have like books of books of stuff, okay? This is the number one book I have, okay? And then one book I use. I just wanted it back there so I could get everything off of that side wall so I can put up the marker board. So I've been doing some changes, but I got really sick and um, was out for a while. I also, before I got sick, I was like, Lord, I want to take some time off the internet. And I took uh, four or five days off the internet, didn't touch the computer or nothing. And then I was like, okay, let's get back to some of our studies. And I just got really sick. And I'm trying to do Bible studies, and it's hard to focus. Um, so I've just been listening to the Bible, Alexander Scorvey. Um, so I could use prayer for that, that God, that God will heal me, um, and I can get back to doing work again. Um, so the new camera, I think I mentioned I got the new camera. Uh, pray, uh, thank you, praise the Lord. Thank you all, brothers and sisters of Christ, that have donated to the ministry for this camera. I kept waiting and waiting for it to go on sale, and um, my voice might sound different. I'm still getting over it, but um, I kept waiting for it to go on sale. I wanted this camera. It was the best camera I could find after doing the research uh, for doing hour-long videos. Um, it's got 4K capability, and um, it never went on sale. So I got donations from the Brothers and Sisters of Christ. Thank you. I had to throw some extra funds into it, but I believe it's worth it. Uh, when I get back out to doing, uh, it's been raining a lot here, but now we've been getting some sun. When I get back out doing Bible by the Ocean Side, um, Worship by the Ocean Side, or short sit and talks or walk and talks, I'm going to be able to do 4K. Um, I did the last video, which the next part is 4K rendering, okay? I, I can understand what Brian was going through. Everybody keeps pushing Brother Brian and probably Brother JT and Tim maybe, you know, 4K videos. Why don't, you, I need you get, why don't you guys get back to doing the 4K videos? Here's the issue. The last Bible study I did, part four, I think, of the likeness of sinful flesh, part three or part four, um, it took, it was an hour-long study, and when I put it in, the, the, the camera does 10 minute segments. So in an hour, um, I'm looking at like six segments and with 4K, it takes up so much space, uh, two to four gigs I think it was per 10 minute segment. And when I put it in, it took forever to get it to go from the computer to the rendering, <laughs> to the program I have for rendering. And by the time I got everything on there, and all I did was fade in, fade out. I didn't have to do any corrections. I didn't add a lot of pictures or anything like that. Fade in, fade out. And I set it up for the 4K resolution and said, okay, render. Well, eight hours later, almost eight hours later, <laughs> the rendering was complete. And by the time it was done, it was like 38 gigs. And um, if all my videos were 4K, I have an external hard drive, and I forgot what it is, a terabyte, two terabytes, something like that. It w they wouldn't be able to hold them all. So 4K, just so the brethren understand, it takes up a lot of space, it takes up a lot of time. So the 8K, uh, eight hours to render. So then I'm like, okay, it rendered. So then I'm gonna upload the video on YouTube. Well, uh, eight hours later, the video finally got uploaded. So you gotta understand that doing 4K in long videos, it's, it's very pain, painstaking if you wanna say it like that. So I'm gonna limit it to small videos. A brother in Christ suggested, and I thought I already set this up, but sometimes the rendering programs that we use 
We can link it up to the video card. If anybody knows about that, you can give more advice on it. Uh, instead of running off the CPU of the computer, it'll run, run off the card that's on your uh, video card. Uh, and it'll render faster. So that'll help with the rendering. But, um, which brings to the second part. My computer is Stone Age. It works just like the camera before when I told you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that started donating. The camera before did the job that's needed. It was old. It had a hard time with focusing a little bit and focusing on me, the thing moving. <laughs> right now there's a box on the screen on this new uh, camera saying, okay, if I'm moving over here, it's focusing on me. Okay, it's not focusing like when I was doing videos before, it tried to focus on something behind me or something that was ahead of me when I was doing videos outside. But the camera, the old camera, did with what, what it needed to be done. Okay, I didn't need the new camera. The new camera is a blessing. The donations are a blessing. The God giving me the funds to add to it is a blessing. Okay, um, I was going to take the donation tab down because I got the um, camera, I've got the uh, Zoom. If you don't know what the Zoom is, it's a mic that records, sort of, it's a voice recorder, okay? It doesn't do video, it just does voice. So I can link the two and get better quality video. So you can hear me more clearly, especially outside, and the video goes together. So God bless me with that. I showed you before in previous ones, we've got the, uh, I bought the, um, almost look like umbrellas to help reflect the light so you don't see shades, shadows. There's a shadow over here, there's a shadow over there, and so forth and so on. Uh, I bought some things that I didn't absolutely need. God has helped the ministry go without all this stuff, but as time goes by, God has blessed me with this. So I was going to take down the donation tab, but I left it up there because someone suggested that, um, what about a new computer? If my computer is so Stone Age, it still gets the job done, and I'm talking my computer's like 10 years old. And um, at the time, I couldn't afford a top-of-the-line computer. <laughs> so it wasn't a top-of-the-line computer even then, 10 years ago. So someone said, hey, maybe leave the donations up. Okay? And uh, someone already donated again. Praise the Lord and thank you again for the donations. So at this point, any of the donations that come in, it's going to go towards getting a, a better computer that will help run faster rendering, better quality uh, uploading. There's not much you can do with that. Um, that has to do with your internet connection. But it was an option to throw it out there. I also buy things and give them away. Uh, Brother JT did these books about how to be saved and know it. Um, I give Bibles. If someone emails me and says, hey, I'd like to get a Bible, um, prayer and testimony. If you need a good Bible or want a Bible, if there's money in the funds, the ministry funds, I send people Bibles. I'll go online to church Bible publishers and I'll order a Bible and have it mailed directly to you if you want a Bible. I've gotten books that I have that I believe can give you some good information and I will order those online and mail it to people who don't have a lot of money. Okay. So, and uh, teenagers that don't have a lot of money that want to know the truth. So that's where some of the money will go for the, the ministry that gets donated. God's already provided a roof over my head, clothes on my back, food. Um, that's why I'm full, I believe I'm full time as far as the work I do, but I don't need to be paid you know, some people get into full-time ministry, that's their only income is donations. It's not my only income. So, without rambling on too long, I left the donation tabs out. The next goal for the ministry is, let's see if I can find a cheap computer today that's still, you know, 50 times better than my Stone Age computer. Okay. And uh, future projects. Next thing to talk about. I was going through this. I showed this book before. I don't want to lose my place. Um, Catechism on the Doctrines, Usage, and Holy Days of the Protestant Ex Epis Episcopal Church. And this book is really old. And it's good evidence of how the Protestants wanted to reform the Catholic Church. They didn't say, I want nothing to do with it. And a lot of their stuff got brought over. This is basically Catholic. 
and they're saying it's for Protestants, but I believe it's the Catholics' way of you know trying to control the Protestants and get them back under the authority of Rome because we're going to go through it. I figured we'll just go through section by section. It'll take time and do it in between other studies. And um, I found some very interesting things in here. So we're going to start some videos on this. Um, I got some testimonies, praise the Lord, haven't got them in a while, so we'll be doing some videos on the testimony. I'm going to get into, uh, next series is uh, two series, I keep talking about doing it, we're going to do it. Um, who is Jesus? Okay, who is Jesus? And we're going to go through everything, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Counselor, Prince of Peace. We're just going to slowly start going through all the titles of who Jesus is. And we're going to talk about, is he that to you? Okay, a lot of people say, well, Jesus is king. That's the study I'm working on right now. Jesus is king of kings. He's my king. Well, one of the things a king does is he rules over the people. Is he your ruler? He commands, you obey. Are you obeying him? Well, no, we do our own thing. Then you don't believe he's your king. And there's a capital K king and a lowercase king. And there's a separation between the two. Um, but like I said, I want to get into those studies. We're going to get into a series of studies of who is Jesus Christ. Okay. The other set of studies I've really been pushing, uh, doing studies here and there on my own is the armor of God. Okay. Uh, one of the things we're going to get into with scripture is a king, he, uh, he judges, he rules. And in order for a king to rule and judge and his authority to go across, he has to have an army. Okay, so I want to go over the different pieces of the armor of God and talk to you, brothers and sisters of Christ, of what God has shown me of why each one was chosen, and you realize that there's an action there, okay? Um, when you're putting on the helmet, you're putting on a helmet it's a, of salvation. It's an action, okay? All the different pieces of armor, there's action required, and there's meaning behind it. So those are the two biggest things, and this, we'll get back to the uh, instruction and righteousness. Um, when it comes to Bible ifs, we're going to get back into those. So those are the four projects I got going so far. Um, so, and like I already talked about, I rearranged the ministry office. Uh, so I had to move everything around like this. So this is just going to be a quick video. I'm going to leave it in 4K because <laughs> it was a quick video. Uh, just letting you know why I haven't put out a video in a, lot, in a week. Normally I'd had one out by Wednesday. I've been very sick and I don't want my sickness because uh, sometimes my mind would stray because you get very exhausted. And I'm trying to do these studies and I had to spend more time with the Lord and uh, listening to the Bible being read, doing some, uh, I couldn't sing, but listening to some worship songs and talking with the Lord and help waiting for him. You're always supposed to wait on the Lord to get through all this. So we're gonna to get to another video, which I'm gonna read a testimony by a brother in Christ and a prayer request. So, uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. <laughs> 